And that's why the Book of Boba Fett is headed along the trajectory of Bad Batch. Like I said, it would be. Let me just remind y'all that I did say Boba Fett would be a dumpster fire. It's not as bad as Bad Batch. It's not as bad, but it's still pretty bad. It's It's getting there if it doesn't clean its act up. It still has time to redeem itself. It has four episodes. You could do a lot of four episodes. Four episodes left. Yeah, four episodes left. Not four episodes total, four episodes left. You How exactly? to do something in four episodes. I've seen it done before. I mean, Expanse. Expanse did pretty well. <laughs> Expanse is, like, summarized everything so, so well um, with its new season, even though it was, like, short as hell. Well, it does have the, the luxury of having um, pre-existing media around yeah. it. I mean, it is a set of nine books and eight novellas. But, I mean, still, considering, like, what they were doing, I don't think really, I at least I wasn't expecting, like, a really well ending, considering since they had so many things to resolve. But, and you know, that's besides the point. I did say they wrapped it up pretty well. They did. Before they did. the they episode, did. right? Yeah. They yeah. did their thing. So, oh, by the way. questions unanswered, though. This is a sound check. Yeah, this is it, this is a sound check. Do we do we check off? Uh, yeah, I think. Alrighty then. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cross Gen Podcast. Hi, guys. I am Walt, and I'm joined here by my two sons and my other two hosts of the Cross Gen Podcast. Cross Gen. Goodbye. Cross Gen. Cross Gen. Cross Gen. It's AJ like and Eli. AJ and Eli, say hi. Cross Gen. Goodbye. Uh, Bye. Hello. What's hello. the Cross Gen beat? Genetic Cross Gen. Ticky, ticky, what? I made a beat. It was it was sort of ironically cross gen cross gen is horrible soundcloud soundcloud rap yeah let's do a horrible soundcloud rap yes Diablo frigid air sure fresh nutritional facts oh it's like a it's like a freestyle whatever word comes to your head like cross gen in the house boy what the hell no? Wait, but what are we what are we doing. Today, we are going to be talking about DC's latest great and greatest, uh, the HBO Max series Peacemaker, which just came out Thursday, right? Uh, yeah. I believe it did come out just on the first episodes. They dropped three episodes yeah, three in one episodes. shot um, on this past Thursday. And it seems like they're going to be following a Thursday release schedule going forward. Mm-hmm. Next episode will be January 20th. So um, the episode, the series stars John Cena. He's reprising his role from DC's The Suicide kind of weird, though. Squad. Because I-, I didn't see him at all in the show. I didn't see John Cena. I get he, it. he wasn't even there. Oh, you saw a Peacemaker. Huh? No, no I think he's I, saying no, I saw, like, look, I, I saw like it too. There was like a floating suit. The the suit you, you didn't see. No one was in the suit. Nobody was. No yeah. one was wearing the helmet. It was just a suit and a helmet walking around. And I guess that maybe it was like voice too. acting or something. But I didn't see John Cena at all, which is like kind of weird considering they casted totally, him. I'm totally lost. Right well, now. you can't see John Cena. Yeah, you can't see John Cena. Oh, I get it. <laughs> it took me a while. I'm so grateful that this joke is. You still can't going see me. John Cena. <laughs> you can't <laughs> see me. Okay, now I get it. Yes, we didn't see John Cena. John Cena. No, John there. Cena was as invisible as Drax was. Drax, <laughs> right? <laughs> when he was eating. When he was eating. What? What was he eating? Cheetos or Cheerios or he was eating something. Yeah, yeah right? he was eating. Oh something. no, like popcorn or something. But anyway, anyway. I'm practicing on being invisible. <laughs> you cannot see me. It's horrible. Yeah, so um, John Cena is is in the show, but you can't see him because he's John Cena. You can't yeah, see him. Probably voice acting. So, Yeah, so uh, 
Peacemaker, man. Uh, James Gunn comes back. He he was the one that directed uh, the Suicide Squad, mm-hmm. which came which came out over when was Suicide Squad? That was last year, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, that sounds right. And so he's directing and writing the spinoff from that movie, Peacemaker. Peacemaker. And you can instantly tell that this is going to be a James Gunn, James Gunn production with the now classic intro. <laughs> right? Yes. The intro. Bro, we need just a segment for that. That would be amazing. Well, the intro in of itself is probably... I think I think it's already gone into the annals of the most classic intros of all time, right? Yes. For sure. So the interesting thing with James Gunn is that as he was preparing for the Peacemaker series, um, before he even wrote a single word, he already had the soundtrack for the series already in his head. <laughs> okay. He already what knew what hell? songs, and he picked this this song. Um, it's by a it's it's by a rock band called Wigwam. Oh, right? Jesus. Um and it's it's if you hear him, he has an interview on Rollingstone.com where he talks about just the intro. The the interview is just about the intro. So he talks <laughs> about the intro and how he knew instantly that that was going to be the song that was the intro. He then reached out to a choreographer who happens to be the wife of another guy that we've seen in DC in Doom Patrol, Alan Tudyk, right? Is that okay? He's the invisible guy. Oh, he's the bad guy of uh, Negative Man, right? Is it Negative Man? I in Doom guess. Patrol. Okay. Yeah, he so. wears the bandages. Yeah. I no, 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 no. That's not him. He's the bad guy of Doom I Patrol. I have never oh. completed a season of Doom Patrol, so I wouldn't know. Okay, he was also in Dodgeball, the pirate. Yeah, it's him, it's him, yeah. Okay, so his uh, his wife is doing the did the choreography for the intro, Mm. and um, her name was Charissa Lee Barton. And James Gunn didn't find out that she was married to Alan Tudyk until much farther into the process. So, you know, she came up, he came with the song and he said, this is what I want to do. This is how you're going to do it. And everybody danced. Right? A lot of the people from the first episode, but there is one person that we still haven't seen in that whatever you want to call it. That person doesn't show up until the fifth episode. Um, and you had the guy who, at the very beginning, is washing, yes. is cleaning the floors, right? Yes. John Cena had to learn how to dance. Oh, okay. He was not a good dancer. And so credit to him for, credit to her for getting him to dance as well as he does. Eagly, who is a, a that's sidekick. CGI. Yeah, that's, and but he didn't come into the process until much later. And apparently yeah. James Gunn was like, oh, I actually have a storyboard of the end shot of that intro, right? <laughs> Where it's um, Peacemaker holding up Judo Master on one of his shoulders and eagerly flies in and does that epic pose, right, <laughs> to end the- So you had that, right? Um, like I said, it was it was really, really cool probably one of the best parts of it and it kind of gives you a really good sense of what the show is going to be <laughs> yeah so it does it's amazing <laughs> you know and apparently that's not the first time that he's done an intro like that he has a movie called super where he does it but in that one he did an animated version of kind of something like that oh. <laughs> so there's that um so Anything else you want to talk about the intro? Because the intro no. is super it's just awesome, horrible, and amazing all in one. I mean, it, it's it's it like you said, it just literally sums up the entire show in just like a couple of seconds because of how crazy it is and just you know. But anyway, anyway, best dancer in the intro, 
Oh my god. <laughs> Thoughts? John Cena. Well, we can't see the best dancer. Oh yeah, we can't see him. We can't see him. It's always <laughs> just a flying suit, which is sort of weird. I don't know if that's how it's in the comics, but whatever. Would you even be able to see him talking? Like, would you be able to see his voice? No, no. So like then, I said, it's just voice acting. No, but that's what I'm saying. Would you even be able to see his voice? See with your his ears. Voice. See his voice with your ears. You wouldn't see it. No, you wouldn't see his voice with your ears. Exactly. So you won't hear anything. So, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? I'm confused. I'm but anyway, so anyway, lost. anyway. I'm so lost. Well, anyway. Um, so there you go. Peacemaker right now currently holds a 93% on Rotten Tomatoes. Hmm. Does Sounds it about earn, right. Does it earn yeah. that Rotten Tomato-ness? If not 95. Yeah, I'd say the same. <laughs> so let, let's talk about the show. Uh, Wikipedia's description. Well, actually, the description for Peacemaker, and I'm, I'm looking at one here. I'm going to read it out. It's very long. Mm-hmm. A man fights per, for peace at any cost, no matter how many people he has to kill to get it. <laughs> That's the description of the show. He fights for peace, no matter how many wo- women and children and men have to die for it. <laughs> uh, that that gets interesting after a while. Here's a little yeah. bit more. Here's a little bit more robust description. I'm getting this from IMDb. The origin of the DC superhero, so dedicated to world peace that he's prepared to use force of arms to achieve it. It's basically the same thing that we just said in the first one, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, what do you guys think? Like I said, ninety three percent on Rotten Tomatoes. You guys said it probably should get bumped up to ninety five. What is so cool about this show? Just it doesn't take itself seriously at all, and it knows that. And in knowing that, it doesn't even take knowing that it doesn't take itself seriously at all, at all. For real. And that just what expounds it, like just the level of craziness that is the show Peacemaker is what makes it work so wonderfully. Like, <laughs> oh God, just and you, you, you. I'll, I'll just say this so that, like, if you haven't seen it, go watch it right now. Spoilers, all right? Yeah, spoiler, spoiler alert. Terror, the spoiler curtain has lifted. Spoiler, red alert. Pew, pew, pew. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Go. Yeah. His helmet is not just a helmet. <laughs> oh, my God. They all apparently have powers. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. That's something they... we didn't get from the Suicide Squad, right? Yeah, that's yeah. weird. <laughs> but dang. That... Oh, oh, my God. God. That scene where, like, you know, the, yeah. the butterfly... And then yeah, like, that's that's the enemy, the butterfly. The butterflies, yeah, literally just the butterflies. It's named par- projects, uh, project butterfly. It's literally just butterflies. Um, oh, the part where like she's there's like this butterfly that he's fighting, and then she's running towards him, <laughs> and then he puts on his helmet right next to his uh, car that's like painted with the American flag, um, <laughs> and he just. I guess just says activate sonic boom and then just a huge splat. <laughs> and that's it. And he wrecks the entire parking lot in the process, too. And he's just sitting there in his tidy whities by the way. Yeah. <laughs> he's going, oh. <laughs> it is God. very interesting. That was the first episode, right? That yeah. was the first. That was, that was the first. ending of the first episode. So... Um, just, just to go over the cast really quick, right? Obviously we have the guy that you can't see John Cena playing the titular role of peacemaker voice actor, right? (laughs) Um, and then you have, you have a very interesting set of characters. Um, forgive me if I mess up his, his pronunciation of his name. Chukwudi Iwuji plays Clemson Mern. Okay. He's kind of like, so 
what happens let, before we get into the cast and we introduce everybody let's let's talk about how this thing starts right okay. because i think we have to do that to kind of give the plot of what's going on and then we can introduce the characters right so at the very end of the suicide squad we get an end credit scene which ties directly to the show it was almost like a backdoor trailer in a sense right very very small like a teaser trailer of what's to come yeah. so any of you guys want to explain that that end credit scene so they just finished beating starro the conqueror right <laughs> and peacemaker seemingly dies at the hands of blood sport right yeah but he's not cuz he's in the hospital alive and well <laughs> and that's I mean, basically the end credit scene. Yeah. So the beginning of Peacemaker expounds on that, right? We because first, awesome. yeah, we first get the the previously on, and this is an interesting thing that they did because normally with DC, right, their universe is kind of disconnected right now, right? They're they're very much in flux of what they're going to do in terms of a a cinematic universe with for them. But what this show does is directly ties to the movie to the point where the previously on is kind of a very good recap of the Suicide Squad movie, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And it leads into we're back in the hospital with Peacemaker and from there he gets out. I mean, of course he has a very funny conversation with the janitor there. I'm a superhero. I'm here because of superhero stuff. Oh, yeah, what superhero are you? Peacemaker. Who's that? I've never heard of him. Oh, what? Come on. You never heard of him? (laughs) (laughs) It's almost almost like that Star-Lord conversation, right? (laughs) Except the only thing is that he ends up he ends up actually recognizing him, and he's like, oh, wait, no, you're the racist superhero. And he's like, what? No. And yeah. just like, and then there's like this whole little bit about like you disproportionately kill <laughs> based on race. It was just, oh God. Yeah, it was an it's interesting hard. conversation, right? Yeah. But the moral of the story is he's completely unguarded and he thinks he can just cut loose and run, right. which he does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he gets in a taxi and just like, oh God just leaves but, but he's like extremely paranoid that he's going to jail right yeah that's like the biggest takeaway with especially with the conversation with the janitor right he was like dude is is any is anybody looking for me you know and the guy was like uh no <laughs> yeah. but we do find out um a little bit later that his quote unquote escape was sanctioned by Amanda Waller, right? Because he's got very specific plans for Peacemaker. She. She, I mean. Yes, you're right. Yeah. So basically, Mern and the crew show up at his house because that's the first place he goes. Yep. After escaping from the government, who knows where he lives. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, I know. So, <laughs> duh, right? If if you're trying to escape and you're afraid that somebody's going to arrest you, where's the first place you go? I'll go home. Oh, God. God. So again, um, we have an Amanda Waller team, right? It's it's kind of a one man task force X, and it's led by Clemson Mern, which is uh, played by Chukwudi Iwuju, and he's joined by Jennifer Holland who plays Amelia Hardcourt, um, Daniel Brooks, who plays a character, Leota Adebayo, and Steve Agee, who plays Die Beard, oh, God. <laughs> John oh, God. Economos, right? That's the character that he plays. And they're basically um, his support for the task that they've been given. And so the the task that he's been given specifically, right? His his deal is, if you want to stay out of jail, you come work for us, right? He still has the bomb at the base of his neck from yeah. the events of the Suicide Squad. So they have a very easy way of controlling him, right? Yeah. But the plan, like you had mentioned before, there's a thing called Project Butterfly. And 
Peacemaker kind of makes it. He's like, well, you guys are real original with your, you know, um, <laughs> mission names, right? Project Starfish, Project Butterfly. But basically, he's tasked by Amanda Waller to kill a specific U.S. senator. Yeah. Um, the ongoing joke, at least for the first three episodes, is why am I doing it? You don't need to know. What is a butterfly? You don't need to know. That's basically the thing, right? Yeah. So, um, he is, he is, he, int- he gets introduced to his team. And then later on, they're going to meet at a diner <laughs> to go over the specifics of the mission. <laughs> And again, he shows up in full <laughs> in his costume. own costume. <laughs> so stupid. Not conspicuous at all, right? <laughs> he even has the, the, the dang silver helmet on. <laughs> While, While he's, he's eating. eating. <laughs> While he's exactly. Eating. <laughs> so there's some pretty good chemistry with the team, right? Even yeah. though the chemistry is uh, super awkward, right? Yeah. Like they think he's an idiot. He believes, I don't know what he believes, right? Well, he believes that hardcore is hot. <laughs> he believes that Economos is dying his beard. <laughs> <laughs> and the one that he has the most connection with is Adebayo. Yeah. yeah. Right? With Mern, he knows what an evil, like, bad guy he was. And we get a sense throughout the episodes that he's kind of trying to do what uh, Black Widow is doing, or you know, kind of his ledger is red, and he's trying to um, kind of what's the word I'm looking for? He's get some not red pages in. Yeah, he he's trying to redeem himself for all the things that he's done before, you know. Um, so that's that's the gist the gist of the mission. Yeah. Um, but we meet some other very interesting characters along the way as well. Like his father. <laughs> oh, his father. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, he's terrible. Like, he's oh, such God. A bastard. Props to, oh, God. He Robert was Patrick. Robert Patrick. Like, just amazing the way you play it off. But, God, I hate his father. <laughs> so his character is Augie Smith. Yes. Um, John Cena. Peacemaker is Chris Smith, so father and son. Now, when we first meet them, right, he's a full on racist. He he yeah. is he's like the worst of the worst, you know. He literally starts laughing almost to his own death because of a, a really poorly in taste joke that uh Peacemaker makes, right? Yeah. yeah, but there's a surprising aspect to Augie Smith, isn't it? One that kind of took us by surprise, especially in that second episode with the closet. Oh, God. oh Jesus! Wow, that like completely like <laughs> if you, if you wanted to do uh, bigger on the inside and then like amplify that to like a million, that's basically what that was. Because this dude is stacked. <laughs> Some high level when it time. comes to weapons and crap, like you look at his home and it doesn't even look that big. It's, it's a regular suburban home. And when you go into this closet, it's like the world opens up into like the the largest armory in existence. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, what the hell? And what's in the armory? Oh, you betcha. There are a bunch of those silver helmets. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He even had one that gave you a disease. <laughs> no, no, no. For real? Yeah, that was the end credit scene for uh, episode one. Jesus. He was like, Christ. this one gives you, I, I don't remember what the specific disease was. And he's like, a man should get that at least once in his life. <laughs> and it's like, what the hell? <laughs> so there's one that gives you a disease, one that gives you full body armor, which is. Why didn't he use that in Suicide Squad? That's that's my only thing. And there's obviously the one with Sonic Boom. Jesus Christ, that is so horrible. Well, the, to, to speak on on why he didn't use it in the Suicide Squad, it does seem like they were kind of estranged at the beginning, right? Because yeah. He, he believes that 
a peacemaker is a wuss. <laughs> yeah. For lack of a better Christ. word. You know, he, he distinctly gave me that, um, that, uh, the father vibe from um, Zoolander. Do you remember that that scene where Zoolander a decides, bit, yeah. he, he decides to go back to his roots, so he goes to Pennsylvania to the coal mining country, <laughs> and his father's like, "You're a joke, you know. Yeah. You you you're no longer my son," and <laughs> you know. So he's got that whole that whole thing with um, you know, John Cena's character, where yeah. they're kind of estranged. The father clearly has no respect for the son or anything that he does. He thinks he's a joke. But yet he gives him at least one helmet. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe that's the reason why he he didn't have cool helmets in the Suicide Squad. Probably. You know? And it's not like Amanda Waller is going to roll up to his joint and say, hey, give him the Sonic Boom helmet. True. <laughs> so he probably just had the helmet he had on when he had when he got caught, which was just a regular silver helmet i guess mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it shows that augie smith is an amazing inv- inventor you know he yeah. he clearly is very tech savvy when it comes to making this these things and the implication was is that he made most of chris smith's costumes right mm-hmm. um the thing about him though is that we get the reveal in episode two yeah, that sounds right, because that's when they... F- so speak about that. Yeah, so to begin with, uh, so they kill the first butterfly, right? But now he has to escape the crime scene, because the butterfly gets blown to absolute hell by the sonic boom, <laughs> along with half the parking lot. To to the point that one of the forensic officers thought that the, the butterfly's face was a pizza. <laughs> God, <laughs> that's bad. Yeah, and so eventually he does escape, but uh, Economos, who's the tech savvy guy on the team, he he needs he was, he's tasked by Mern to kind of wipe away all the evidence because this is a black uh, or what you call it. This is one of those off the books operations, yeah, a black, black ops. ops. Mm-hmm. So like. <laughs> and he granted he does it and he pulls off some like uh to quote him uh super savvy internet or next level n- stuff yeah uh wizardry but the person he chooses to frame maybe not the smartest idea because who he chooses to frame <laughs> Is uh, Peacemaker's father oh, so Smith. stupid? Why, <laughs> out of all people? So Mern Mern looked at him because the the thing that he did was he changed the registration of the the Super Patriot car. I guess if that's what you want to call it, whatever. What the the Peacemaker mobile? Yeah, I guess you can call it that. So it was under Chris Smith's name, and he was like, "Well, you know what? Let's change it and let's do it." So Mern was like, "Wait a second. We're supposed to keep Chris Smith's involvement, Peacemaker's involvement, on the down low. And you thought it was a good idea to change the registration of the car to his father. (laughs) Out of all To be clear. (laughs) You want to make sure that Peacemaker has nothing to do with this, but you change the registration to To his his father. father. God. <laughs> so stupid. Oh my gosh. So the thing about it is that the the cops then obviously have to follow up because they're like, okay, something weird is going on here. Let's go talk to the father. And the father gets all, you know, confrontational conspiracy theory, you know, you get off my property, you're you don't have no no right to be here, all this all this crazy yeah. stuff, right? But eventually, Adebayo does the same thing. Only when they say to bribe. Because <laughs> so she, she comes to the two people who were witnesses to the, I guess, the murder of the butterfly. <laughs> they, she, she bribes them to say, anyone 
but or not anyone but him that it had to be whoever they said was the frame and they attest to Augie Smith being at the scene. Oh so now, to make sure that they keep Peacemaker in, in line, right? To get him in their good graces. They don't tell him. Well, but no. The, the, I, I think Mern was being kind of, he was like, guys, you know, first of all, it was bad that you changed the registration to his father's name. Now you're going to frame him for the murder <laughs> i mean we're trying to keep peacemaker here you're making things worse <laughs> but in doing so he gets thrown into jail and that's where we get the reveal that augie smith is not just um peacemaker's father but he's actually well known in the jail system because he's been in jail before and it's revealed that he is the dc villain White Dragon, a very, very racist uh, DC villain. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if he's going to. It doesn't appear like he's going to be the main villain, but I think somewhere down the line, they're going to have to address the fact that he is the White Dragon and something's going to happen. Right. But it does yeah. appear that they are they are going to follow this butterfly um, storyline. Yeah, and, and they kind of have to after that third episode. Yeah, because <laughs> it, it's kind of revealed that the butterflies are really like aliens, right? Yeah, and aliens that we have we ever seen those aliens I have in the DC universe? Never seen them before. So this is a thing that's actually stumping you, then, right? Yeah, like this is probably one of those super deep cuts project. Butterfly. Like I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> what if White Dragon don't even turns know. into a butterfly? That'll be weird. Yeah, that'll definitely. Maybe that's how he gets whatever he gets. I don't uh, know. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, we'll see. Weird. I don't know. But whatever, whatever, whatever. But, but the, the of- point I was trying to make was that they have to deal with this because, I guess, according to their map data, like a good quarter to half of the world, like not just America. The world is, I guess, possessed because they kind of jack your brain and walk you around like a, yeah, they're infected with Project Butterfly. (laughs) So it's, it's almost like a secret invasion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To use a Marvel storyline. It's a secret invasion where this alien butterfly thing is kind of. Slowly. Taking over, slowly yeah. taking over the world, right? Um, okay, so, well, that's the basis of Peacemaker. There's one character that we haven't spoken about. A character that we've seen before in the DC Arrowverse. A character by the name of Adrian Chase. A character by the name of Vigilante. Oh, a character that is a very different version from the one that we've seen oh, in the Arrowverse. Christ, a vigilante. Yeah, because he is. <laughs> vigilante in the Arrowverse eventually becomes the villain Prometheus. Well, he is Prometheus. Yeah, exactly. And hey, look, on TV, there's a trailer for what we're talking about. Peacemaker. <laughs> oh, God. So Vigilante in the Arrowverse is a very serious and... and brutal. Brutal villain. Right. Well, at the beginning, he was villain. vigilante. He was vigilante. He was very much a kind of. But then afterwards, he becomes a villain to Arrow. Yeah. Well, that's only because he was Prometheus all along. Right. Exactly. So this version the is one that, nothing like that. Yeah. The one that James Gunn gives us <laughs> is a very, very different version than the one that we're used to seeing. Um, like it's weird he's a clown (coughs) he's like an actual clown more or less but then he's not at the same time and and the actor freddie stroma is the one that plays him and i gotta tell you i like the characterization that he's doing for (laughs) a vigilante right yeah 
Like as over the top and clowny as he is, he's like amazing. And so he's BFFs with Peacemaker, but Peacemaker Quote doesn't unquote. know. Yeah, BFFs yeah, no. in name. Peacemaker doesn't actually know his secret identity. Yeah. Even though we do see him in a very awkward uh, scene oh, at that Jesus that Christ. first meeting with uh, oh, God. Peacemaker and his team, right? Not even that. Just I, I love the thing where it's like, you know, you call me a clown and all that, but it's because I'm such a super careful and meticulous supervillain that I didn't go to jail, but you did. Yeah. <laughs> It's just so insane. And they were talking about the mask, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, bro! What happens when at like the at during the third episode with oh, like yeah. no, but like the whole scene where they they have to take off his mask and then he's just <laughs> acting so stupid with like trying to make silly faces so that, so that they can't they can't recognize him even though you clearly see his face. It's God. just so horrible, bro. <laughs> He's a very strange individual. Very strange. You know? Very strange. But when the going gets tough, hey, I mean, he actually gets it done. I mean, like happily. Peacemaker has been uh, having a crisis of faith, quote unquote, recently. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. like ever, it, it's very clear that the events of Suicide Squad shook him. The Suicide Squad. Shook him up, especially where oh, what Rick Flag is concerned. Yes, because he kills him. I don't think I don't think Peacemaker has ever looked at himself as kind of a villain, but right? he kind of that's kind of peeling away because of that. Right, exactly. You know, and and now he's he's becoming more self aware of how people view him. You know, before he thought he was like this. He was doing everything in in the purpose of peace yeah a mission from god yeah. literally <laughs> and i think now like you said as the show goes on he's kind of starting to realize you know a lot yeah. of the things that he's doing is questionable um and he's almost kind of gaining like a moral code in in a sense even yeah. though he's still way out there man. yeah Fringe, like you know? so what happens in episode three is is because well, okay before i even touch on that it was. It's constantly brought up in the show by him sometimes too that he will do whatever it takes to attain peace. And like you said, that can come in the form of killing men, women, or even children. He says this multiple times. That's his quote. But then when his feet gets put to the fire and everyone's expecting him to take a certain kill shot, four kill shots, he can't really go through with it. He isn't able, like, at first you can kind of make the argument, okay, well, he didn't have a clear shot, so he couldn't do it. No, I think. But then when you got to the scene where it's like, okay, all four of them are actually butterflies. We're taking them all out. Even then, he couldn't bring himself to pull the trigger because not only was it this senator butterfly and his wife, it was also his two kids. And he couldn't do it. Then you have this savage vigilante come up and go, one, two, three, he's let's humming. go for a four. Yeah. He's humming while they're doing it. Like, yeah, he's <laughs> humming. Like he was like, excuse me, I'll take care of this. And he yeah. shoves Peacemaker aside. And he's like happily humming. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> first one. Second one. He Jesus starts with name. like, no, no, yo, yeah, that's right. He starts with the wife, then casually moves on to the kids. This is like terrible, but like, oh god, really like make horrible. him call him a clown all you want. Like he's still sort of the real deal when it comes to like a, a I guess professional killer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, didn't it feel like I? I thought when he first took that first shot, I thought he was gonna go double kill. I did too. Right? Yeah, that was the weird. way they framed the shot. The wife was literally her face was right in front of the senator's face, right? And I, I swore that that's what that's where they were going. Like it was going to be a one bullet, two kills type of thing, right? That yeah. didn't happen. That would have been a clean shot. 
Yeah, right? no. that's, a, that's sort of weird. I guess but... probably wind speed in the bullet. I don't know. <laughs> it's weird how they frame that shot that way, though. You know, because that's the impression that I was getting mm-hmm. Inst- instantly when I saw it. I was like, oh, okay. Because the one before clearly had them separated. And then all of a sudden you go back and they're like kind of lined up for the shot. Um, but it's weird. But Vin- Vigilante is a very interesting character. Vigilante like, is God. a menace. He is, <laughs> he is a menace. Yeah. He is. God. Hiding behind... Uh, Tree shrubs and, and <laughs> a talking bush. The, the, ta- the talking scene. bush. Where, I don't know what you're talking about. But Hiding clearly, behind dumpsters. Yeah, it's just he's a, he's horrible. Oh my he, he clearly is at the pedestal of peacemaker, right? Yeah, like he clearly has this very unhealthy obsession with peacemaker. Oh my god! And I think we established that, especially like like I said in that very first um, episode where they show him in the restaurant. You know, he's like what? He was like a, a, a table bus. boy, a bus boy, right? What did I say? What? What did I say? Well, I'm pretty sure. The bus all, boy is vigilante. And you didn't like, want to do it at first. You were like, no. I said, I said possibly, right? But you knew that he had a, an unhealthy yeah. obsession because he goes... After he sees him and he's staring at him and he's waving really creepily at him, yeah, right? he so goes awkward. into the back into the alley and starts dancing and saying, Peacemaker's back, Peacemaker's back. And you, what could, the hell? you could tell the guy's a little unhinged, right? Yeah. yeah. So, and then talking Jeez. about how, you know, oh, do you want to come to my divorce? <laughs> He's a very. He's very trying strange. to find a cover story for his dancing. Oh my God, it's <laughs> so know. weird. Jeez. So he's a he's a weird puppy there. Um. So. I I I guess we have a good sense of where the show is going to, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, they're going to have to wipe out. Now this becomes a bigger question, right? And this is something that, kind of, any connected universe. Suffers from right mm-hmm. task force X, the singular version, where it's just well, I guess they're going to include vigilante going forward, right? I don't know, I feel like this is task force Y. Why, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, task force, why do we have this? <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but this is where you know some of the some of the shows and some of the movies, um, in a connected universe kind of fail because clearly this is a global threat. Right. Yeah. Um, are they going to introduce more supers into the show? Well, I because yeah, you know you have the Justice League that, that that's out there, and clearly, in talking to the neighbor, Batman is no longer a vigilante, or at least seen as a vigilante in in the public eye. Because remember, Dawn of Justice. Batman was kind of like a figure where people feared him and some people thought he was a criminal. But in this show, they frame him as a hero. So the the events of Justice League clearly happen in this show. And so now there are heroes, Batman included. Where are they going to be? Are they going to bring them in? Because... This is not a street I level doubt threat. It. This is a global threat. Yeah. So you're gonna have to answer those questions somehow. Well, I I think he's just one of many people who are working on the, on the project Butterfly assignment. But like, I don't. I'll think bet that you anything. anything there'll be like a, a sequence where they're like, oh well, how? Or, uh, now I don't know how to frame it because like um, maybe but, they're. You know, it would be really funny is if they're taking the long way around to beat the Project Butterfly dudes, but then the Justice League at the very end of the show are like, yeah, we got it. <laughs> Maybe. And, would, and they just hear about it like over the radio or on TV. Yeah. And I it's just like, I wouldn't p- pass oh, wow. James Gunn doing that. <laughs> you know? So he's he's written and directed most of the episodes. So I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't put him past doing something like that because Jesus Christ. that seems like a little hot. Now, let me ask you a question. How do you like how do you like the show using glam rock as kind of 
it's I it's it's voice, it's fitting, right? honestly. It fits it, and it's so horrible, <laughs> but it fits it. It, it fits John. It fits Peacemaker himself too so well. Do you think they're overdoing it in terms of the amount? Because it almost feels like Peacemaker is a musical, right? At some at certain points, because every other minute you're getting exactly. you're getting a, a song on the soundtrack. And you know what? Like not even just besides the intro. Like in the third episode where you had like Economos dancing over the <laughs> over the dude to the to the song. It judo really master. Feels, judo master. Uh, yeah, to over Judo Master to the song. It really does feel like a musical. But it's so fitting. Oh it fits, how crazy though. It, it does. Yeah. That's what I mean when I say they don't take themselves seriously enough to take themselves seriously that they don't even take their not taking seriously seriously. Yeah. It's really horrible. It works. So, yeah. where do you, so the, the soundtrack is not a distraction to the show. No. No. I say it only adds to it and okay. makes it even crazier. I'd say. It, and that's great. I'd say it's like in the middle for me at least because there's like rock all the time. It, there's always some glam rock song playing literally every single sequence. But I mean, considering how much they do it, I think overdoing it fits it. Considering the fact that Peacemaker is over would, the top. he would do that. I mean, for God's sakes, you literally, literally in the, in the, in the second episode, he took the time when the cops were chasing him. <laughs> So literally rob the the butterfly's house of the rock music that he likes. So it's like I don't even know, bro. He's and he's as insane. he was escaping, he made sure that you know he was he wasn't breaking them, breaking them. You know, yeah. I would have thought from all of those stories he threw it down, something would have broke. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. apparently not. <laughs> he's not very good with parkour either. Horrible. Oh well, I mean that kind of has to do with his shoulder, though. Mm. I mean, yes, I, I get it. No, he's not an actual parkour he's, dude. He's but... not a very graceful superhero. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? even then, but it's it's Every even worse story. because he's just fresh out of the hospital too. Yeah. They just the the in the it's always falling team. on that shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> but but the janitor also made the point. He was like, you know what? You don't look like a superhero because superheroes are graceful and and leaf and athletic, and here you are, this swole character, right? Oh, oh, Jesus. So, okay. Um, any thoughts on Eagly? Eagly, the goat, the goat. He's just legendary. There's nothing you can really do or say. I mean, bro, the first episode where Eagly hugs. Hugs, <laughs> Dad. Yeah. Get the camera. Get the camera. <laughs> it's just, it's just horrible. Oh. But Eagly's eagerly sick. He's just like one of those. I'd I'd even say to call him a a character in a way. He is for people who haven't watched the show yet. He is Peacemaker's sidekick and pet bald eagle. <laughs> It's horrible, but it's amazing at the same he time. He doesn't talk, thankfully. No. At least, at least, oh, you don't, you don't, don't think do so, that. right? Don't do the Diablo <laughs> <the> grunt. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. But Eagly is a fun character in the show. Um, it kind it kind of shows you Peacemaker's need for acceptance and and you know <laughs> exactly. for companionship because out of Everything to choose, he chooses a bald eagle to be his best friend, you know. Oh and, and you could tell that he struggles, and it's it's a kind of a common theme throughout the thing. He struggles with connecting with people, you know. You just gotta love that scene where he finally gets to his house. He puts the music on. He lies in bed, and then he just starts bawling, crying. Like a I could have been a friend with the Cosmos, but I pushed people away. <laughs> he just had a complete temper tantrum. Yeah, it's <laughs> insane. He's so dramatic, but I, I think that's the that's what makes what makes his character. What's funny? He's super about over it. the top, right? Over the top, yeah. Yeah, but again, you know, like I said, it it kind of stresses the fact that he's looking for. He's looking for acceptance. He's looking for um, 
you know, a, a sense that what he's doing is right, you know, yeah. because I don't think he has that yet. And like you said, he's over there bawling, crying about how he can't connect with Economos. But then in the very next <laughs> scenes, you know, he's he's talking about how his beard is weird, you know, <laughs> like it doesn't match his face. And he's always constantly going after Economos and stuff. Yeah. You know? Um, where do you think this show ends? Where where do you think the show is going? I think it's I can't tell you. Because you can't see him? Well, that's part of it, but <laughs> I honestly don't know like maybe they win. <laughs> I, I, I I really don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't think you can wrap up what's going on with Project Butterfly in a season. I mean, considering like the scale of what what of the operation that it is, it's just it's worldwide, literally. So I don't think it's something that you can solve this season. But I do believe at the end of the show, I don't know, maybe what's his name, uh, Peacemaker. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. I I feel like there's like gonna be like a sort of betrayal coming, especially with yeah. Something that really complicates it is that, uh, what's her name? Uh, Harcourt? No. Um, Adebayo? Adebayo. Uh, we haven't even talked about who she was related to. Yeah, right? that's my point. It's it's getting like super complicated considering she is Amanda Waller's daughter. Mm-hmm. So, honestly, yep. that's where I think it's heading. Somewhere around that. Um. I don't know how exactly they're going to do that, but somehow something's going to happen with Amanda Waller. You know what would be funny, actually, now that I think about it? This is how you handle the Justice League. One of the butterflies infects Batman, and they're all just needing to deal with Batman and his containment plans. And that's Batman. (laughs) That would be interesting. <laughs> that would be cool. That's how they get tied up and not able to respond to this as as well. <laughs> Jeez. But anyway, um, yeah. It has um eight episodes. Uh, five of them are d- written and directed by James Gunn. All of them are written by James Gunn. Um, the the series concludes February seventeenth. And um, I, I guess it, it's going to be very interesting how they ended up because, like Eli said, this is not a very easy thing to fix. You know? Yeah. They have a do lot you of think? Problems. Do you think some of the stuff ends up somewhere in the movies, in the films, or does well, this does I this don't... blend into season two if there is one? I think it more blend into season like. Well, here's how I'm going to start thinking about it. Each movie is going to be their own quote unquote self contained universes, but there can be shows set within those self contained universes. That's how I think it's going to play out. Hmm. I think um, a season two would be necessary. Um, I really God, don't I see. I hope for a season two. Yeah. I really don't see how this this could be made into a movie, really. Generally, just because right as of right now, it's only involving Peacemaker, quote unquote. Um, I mean, as I said before, Project uh, Butterfly is definitely a bigger operation, which means that they would need more people. But I don't know. But let, let's just see. Yeah. Okay. So. Um... The interesting thing is that James Gunn is on record and he says he did the series mostly for fun. <laughs> you know, that's good. Um, he does want to do a, a second season, but um, as of as of this recording, um, HBO Max has not committed to a second season, nor do they have contracts for either James Gunn or John Cena to return. So it's kind of up in the air. Oh. Um. I find it interesting that they made this into a series, right? Do you think this would have worked as a standalone film? Not the story per se, right? But just the fact that John Cena headlining a film called 
Peacemaker. Do you think it yes. would have done well? Yes. Or yeah? Okay. I mean, you didn't think anything was going to happen with a show. But I mm. think I think there's more you have more leeway in terms of a show because a show as it goes along can build an audience. Okay. Right? I think I think first impressions are are very important for films, right? And in terms of a film, if people aren't on board with it initially, it may never get traction. Whereas a series, if people start talking about it, then people start getting curious and say, oh, hey, did you see the last episode of Peacemaker? And, you know, it becomes sort of one of these things where it builds over time, you know. So I, I think in terms of making it a show instead of a film, I think is actually the right thing to yeah. do. You know, okay. I don't know if Peacemaker as a character would have been enough of a draw to make it a blockbuster. Yeah, you know? okay, I can see that. Yeah, I don't see a movie happen like a movie with like Peace and Peacemaker. I don't, I, I couldn't see that happening even before the show was released because it's like you oh, yeah, can't you just can't, come out of nowhere. Yeah, but you can't really make like it's it's hard to make a comedy. Something like that into a movie. Like, try making Ted Lasso into a movie. That won't work. Right. It's something that needs to be prolonged for the joke to continue. And that's what we got here. And Peacebreaker is enough of an obscure character. I mean, there's not a lot of people, you know, unless you're like a super hardcore DC guy, you know, who would know who Peacemaker is, right? Yeah. So he's kind of one of those obscure characters that, once again, James Gunn has kind of pushed into the forefront, very much like he did with Galaxy Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. You know? um, Guardians of the Galaxy was kind of obscure, but now they're kind of, everybody knows about them. Everybody knows about the exploits of Star-Lord, you know, and Groot and Drax and Gamora and stuff. Groot. Um, so good on them. Um, any last thoughts on Peacemaker? I mean, no. It's just I, I'm pretty sure we summed it all up. It's it's just a funny, um, definitely made ironically, um, and full of satire movie. Joyride. Yeah, it's a joyride. It's a joyride. Not that's, movie. No, you said it's oh, a yeah, sure, sure, series. Sure. Series. Sure, but it's definitely a joyride, and that's for sure. Okay. Um, one last question, and this is just for fun. Any cameos do you think are going to drop into Peacemaker? Yes. You know what would be cool? Weasel. Yeah, that's, that's exactly <laughs> what I was about to say. Because he did survive after the suicide squad. Weasel needs to come back. And then imagine, you know what would be funny? If, like, he didn't even show up for that long. It's just like <laughs> Weasel's there, and then Vigilante like shoots him out of nowhere just because he's like it's he just like caught him by surprise, and Weasel's <laughs> dead again. It's just like like so you'll just stupid. walk randomly out onto the street or something. Yeah, and then <laughs> Vigilante just pops him, and then that's the end of oh it. Or so we think. Let me ask a question: Did Ratcatcher survive the Suicide Squad? Yeah, that's my choice. What happened with Ratcatcher? Only, only because they did mention him at the very beginning. That was the 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 weird joke that uh, Cena was telling the father. Oh, Jesus. You know, Jesus. So, wouldn't it be interesting if Ratcatcher causes the demise of the White Dragon? Oh my God, that would be horrible. <laughs> you know, that would be horrible, or at least something along those lines. That 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 would be pretty interesting to me. So that's my my thing. I think. You're gonna see Ratcatcher at some point in the series. Back. Ratcatcher and Weasel. Any big characters you think will drop in? Uh, I don't I think so. Highly no. doubt it. I think this is. You're not gonna get Batman. You're only, you're only gonna hear them in name, I imagine. Yeah, it's it's better served as like um, a side story, and that's yeah. that's all it is. You don't no need Batman. to tie it. Although no. to be fair, they did drop Batmite. As a character that oh, exists. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Batmite? What the frick? Who the hell even is he? Oh you know my. who Batmite is? No, but he sounds horrible. <laughs> what the hell? Hold on. Oh, Batmite? you on, on Batmite. Hold oh, on. Oh, God. That is disgusting. Even saying the name. <laughs> Batmite? That is disgusting. 
<laughs> oh no! Oh hell nah, bro! What the frick, bro? What is that? That's bro. Batman. What is this? That that is is that's an actual Batman. wait. Is that an actual thing in the? It's an actual thing in, in the, the comics. Yes. Wait, but is and that they an drop? Actual... They name dropped it in the show too. <laughs> what is that? That looks so disgusting and terrifying. Just him saying hi. Is that an actual thing in in this universe now? They na- Economos name dropped that he would rather be with Batmite than Peacemaker. Batmite is a thing. Bat- <laughs> no, <laughs> no. He's got his own no. Funko. Oh my no. god, that is disgusting. There he is. Jesus Christ. <laughs> a, the Batmite comic. You know what'd be funny if like Batmite is uh, the one that shows up. Yeah, and then just whoops everybody's. You know what? <laughs> behind booty. Um, this is Funko Pop. Jesus Christ, that is disgusting to look at. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Batmite is an imp, and he's he's similar to Mr. Mitzelplik. Oh, Mitzelplik. Mitzelplik, however you say. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, he has magical powers. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> but but it's so no, I'm sorry. It appears that he has magical powers, but he uses advanced, highly advanced technology from the fifth dimension that could not be understood by fifth dimension humans. So that's actually where Mixy Mixy Pitalik comes from, also. Yeah. So, wow. Okay. And so and he's tasked finish? he's tasked to be a villain for Batman, but he what? but he idolizes Batman. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not really Look at a his super face villain. right now. He's not really a super villain. He's more of a super nuisance. Jesus you know? Christ, that is but horrible. That is <laughs> Batmite. We need to we need to do an episode just on Batmite. Bat- no, deep no. Dive of Batmite. Oh, that is disgusting. <laughs> no. Although they should definitely bring in Batmite. Oh, Batmite oh versus Peter Porker. Oh, oh Peter Porker is no and, Peter and, Porker and is the horrible. Tick. Oh God, the Tick! Don't uh, ever speak uh, of that name again. A battle Royale between the Tick, Batmite, and Peter Porker. Jeez, so. I, rem- I remember the Tick. That was like a while ago. The tick oh. is awesome. Yeah, we have a- is awesome. Yeah. So. All right, we're gonna call our episode today. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Please make sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the Crush Gen Podcast. Um, and from everybody here, I'm Walt. This is AJ. Mm, yeah, this is Economos Eli. No, that's disgusting. Eli, Eli might. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I, I take that back. Uh, you Eli, don't Eli Maker <laughs> I don't know What? I tried doing Peacemaker But I, I realized it was Vig Elanti <laughs> That sounds Vig Elanti Oh that's <laughs> disgusting Bat Eli Super Eli I mean, that's kind of trash. But anyway, <laughs> may our eagles cross again. They They're would die. Into each other. They may would our, die mid-flight. May our sonic boom helmets cross. No, no, that's horrible. Um, may <laughs> our economos trucks. No, that's even worse. That's a car crash. Uh, may I? May our. May our Judah Master Kiai's cross cross again. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) What do you think? That kind of works. No, 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 that that doesn't work either. Yeah, that's just may our Judah Master Kiai's cross again. (laughs) Peace out. Later. Peace out.